First of all, the, the question really is what is a sarcoma? Because you, obviously cancer is a, a term that's well known, but there's also a term such as carcinoma. And, uh, and I want to just tell you a little bit about where sarcoma and how sarcoma fits in. It's slightly different from carcinoma. This is a, just a picture of the developing embryo in the early stages. And there's three germ layers, um, and uh, they're called the endoderm, the mesoderm, and the ectoderm. And they generally develop into the, the organs and limbs of the developing human. And sarcomas come from this germ layer, the mesoderm, or of mesenchyme origin. And this eventually then becomes the, 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 the bones, the blood vessels, the muscles, etc. Eventually, about 75% of the eventual body weight of the human being where carcinomas tend to come from the, the layers of uh, epithelial origin, the endoderm and the ectoderm, particularly the, um, the, the endoderm here, where which form the gut, the liver and the lungs. So that's really where sarcomas come from. We're, they're cancers of tissue of mesenchyme origin. But they're extremely rare. So even though it's a big part of the human body, these cells of mesenchyme origin, they only make up 1% of all adult malignancies a bit more common than paediatric age group, but they still were very rare tumours. Um, the breast, the colon, and the lungs are still by far the predominant and most common cancer which uh, in the UK at the moment. In terms of where they occur in the body, and why the service is mainly here in the upper orthopaedic centre, is a lot of them occur in the lower limb and in the upper limb, and a minority occur in the trunk and in the head and neck. But 60% occur in the head and in the, in the, in the limbs, Whereas why orthopedic surgeons tend to take a lead in the treatment of these conditions. In terms of the classification, the big distinction which we'll talk about is that sarcomas are, distinct, are, are, are divided into bone and soft tissue. So they do have distinct ways of being treated. Just to sort of, you'll hear a few terms of how we describe sarcomas. And we tend to say a sarcoma. The name of it, the term we give it, is from their cell of origin. So if it comes, we think the sarcoma comes from the cartilage, we call it from its Latin derivative, chondro, and then we put sarcoma on the end. Bone becomes osteo, muscle becomes rhabdo, fat lipo, smooth muscle light layer. But you can you understand all these different tissues that we have in our body. So there's a lot of terms out there, and so overall we're dealing with over 50 different subtypes of sarcoma in our service. But if you're maybe in the prostatic cancer service, you're only dealing with one. The colon is there is one. So we're seeing sort of quite a, a huge number of very distinct separate biological subtypes of cancer. So the big distinction, distinction is between bone and soft tissue. And soft tissue is about five times as common as bone. These are the approximate numbers that are treated in the United Kingdom every year. About 1,500 in soft tissues, about 350 in bone. So pretty, pretty rare. Um, so we're, 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 we're in, in our service, as you'll see, we're dealing with about 150 of these and about 70 of the bone tumors. These are just some of the terms that we have in terms, and these are the rank of the commonest soft tissue sarcomas. The commonest used to be called the malignant pharmacysteocytoma, but really, no one really knew where it came from. So it's actually coined this new term now called the undifferentiated spindle because we really haven't got a cell of origin for this tumour. But the rest of them all seem to have quite clear cells of origin, fat, smooth muscle, etc. In terms of bone tumours, these are the big three bone tumours that we deal with. And they're pretty rare incidents, osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, and chondrosarcoma. And in terms of their age and sex sort of spread, on the whole, the males tend to be more affected by bone tumours. And the sobering thing about it is that these cancers, these sarcomas, are of young people. Osteosarcoma, teenagers, young adults. Ewing's, under 10 to teenagers, tend to be the common um, patient groups affected by these cancers. The other bone tumour that we talk about is a chondrosarcoma coming from the cartilage. That does tend to have and with all due respect, they want a more middle age, um, sort of around age range, sort of going up to elderly. And also, soft tissue sarcomas also would tend to be in this sort of age profile. 
So it's a quite complex service to run. The reason it is complex is that it's across the age range, being a paediatric um, service as well as um, going up to the very elderly. And these are, to, I just, I think just to emphasize these different ecological subtypes that all have distinct different ways of being treated. And there are numerous treatment algorithms, surgery, chemotherapy, and radiotherapy. And it can occur anywhere in the body, from the foot right up to the face of the skull, even into the brain. And so you need to use a number of different surgical sites, and that's why this is ideally situated in being out in a city like Oxford with all the requisite and uh, necessary surgical services. Because it's so complex, recycling was a poor relation to a lot of cancer treatments really at the start of the last, uh, the last decade. Um, and it really was being treated from done before quite haphazardly in a number of areas. And so NICE, the National Institute of Health and Technical Excellence, looked at sarcoma and came out with some pretty strong and, uh, and, and, and long guidelines on how sarcoma should be treated to reflect the, um, the complexity. And that came out in 2006 and sort of led how we developed the service in Oxford. It's largely based at the Nuffield All Peak Centre here. Um, we deal with both bone and soft tissue sarcomas, and actually in this room here, we, um, we do the multidisciplinary team meeting, and every Monday morning we video conference across these screens with a number of different oncology centres around the region. We try and do a one-stop shop clinic where patients who haven't had any investigations get the majority of investigations and clinical assessment in the one clinic, and hope that they come back the next week with the result. We're very lucky being enough of a pig centre that we do need to amputate um, someone's some leg or arm because of the sarcoma. We've got excellent prosthetic help and advice. And where really Oxford sort of ha has sort of led the field in the UK in sarcoma care has been the development right from an early stage of close working with plastic surgeons, reconstructive surgeons, to improve the functional outcome of these patients after treatment. And we run joint theatre sessions on a Wednesday um, in this hospital. We've also seen the Oxford Cancer Centre um, open up 18 months ago. Um, we have, our, we have a, a, a clinic over there and we work close closely with the oncologists in, the, in that area. And as we'll see later in the talk, we'll end up, we're talking about our close collaboration with the University of Oxford, particularly the cell biologists, in trying to identify new treatments of uh, sarcoma. Just a quick snapshot of the number of people who turn up to this meeting. Lots of different surgeons, spinal surgeons, Jeremy here turns up and spinal service, general surgery, trach surgery, all represent the different um, areas that sarcomas can present in. Pediatric team, and we're very heavily served by nurse specialists who do a lot of the support work for our patients. Just to give you an idea of how sarcomas are treated in England, the yellow dots are where soft tissue sarcomas are undertaken. And the triangle is where bone tumour sarcomas are run, where bone tumours are treated. Here we are in Oxford, um, big units in Birmingham and London to our east and west. And you'll see the, the number of the more soft tissue sarcoma is also reflecting the increased incidence. We do bone tumours, and that's actually centrally funded by, um, uh, by an organisation called the National Specialist Commissioning Group, who also um, commission um, services, especially services like heart transplant. And we are inspecting a report every six months um, to keep that status of being a, a bone tumor centre. We've also sort of extended quite a lot of work down in the southwest after taking our number of bone tumor cases from the Bristol and southwest area. So overall, we get patients from quite a wide area in really this triangle here. And you know, it's a long, long way to come from the bottom of Cornwall right up to us. So there's lots of issues that we have to be um, mindful of about getting patients up to us for treatment. And also, you'll see quite a lot of our patients need to have treatment after they've had surgery, and they need to go down and work with other oncology units in this area to continue their treatment. <coughs> We've seen a sort of a 10% increase year on year in cases, um, um, which has sort of um, yeah, put our service under a lot of pressure at some time, but also allowed us to expand and keep the skills and the experience in treating these, uh, these cases. These are the malignant bone tumours, malignant soft tissue tumours. We're also seeing a big increase in the work of what um, we call metastasis, which is where carcinomas are spread into the skeleton. And Jeremy's going to talk a bit about that in his talk on that in, in the spine. And these are the hematological malignancies down in my core. So year on year, a pretty steady increase. 
another big advance that we're seeing really in how we investigate is that when we want to see a patient with a sarcoma, we want to know, as I've talked to you, what type of sarcoma it is, how active and aggressive it is, and also the extent of it. Has it spread? These tumors can um, send out micrometastasis, which lodge in the chest and they get bigger, and that's the thing that often actually causes patients to die. So that's how they're the questions we want to answer when we see patients. So we try and stage them. That's the assessment, the extent, the quantitative assessment of the tumor. We locally stage them with MRI scan. That's a gold standard. This is a cross-sectional imaging, looking at what structures the tumor involves. Then we want to biopsy it, because that's going to give us the histological type. And we often biopsy with needles or true cut biopsies with our, with our x-ray colleagues. And that allows us to work out what the grade of tumor we tend to have low-grade tumors, which are relatively indolent, are just going to spread locally, or high-grade tumors, which are potentially going to spread around the body and, uh, and are life-threatening. Then we want to systemically stage patients. We used to traditionally use chest X-ray and CT scan. We're now using a, something called PET CT scan more and more. And PET CT scan is a real big um, step forward because, as well as looking at um, the whole body, we're well, looking at um, the actual extent of the tumour, has it spread into the chest? We're also looking at the function of the tumour. And actually, it's working out how active the cells in that tumour are. And we can often correlate that to the actual grade. So this is bright red, very active. This is a high grade tumour that is close to actually um, 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 sending out metastasis to the chest. Why is it important to know about the stage? Um, this is a, a graph looking at Ewing sarcoma. This is a graph showing the survival with patients who present without metastasis. And this is a graph of patients who present with metastasis. And obviously, the survival is, growth, is much less if patients have metastasis than uh, that presentation. Um, it, it's very important to know whether they have metastasis because that does determine treatment. And obviously, these are young patients as well. And this is it's important details for the family to know. So treatment of these sarcomas, as we talk, is now very much in specialist centres in this country. Um, and there's also this been this era of limb salvage. 30, 40 years ago, most people with sarcoma of the limb would have got amputations. Now amputations occur very rarely, under 10%. So surgical surgical skills and experience have increased. So that on the whole, we, to get local control, we do try and get a wide resection among tumours. And there's a bit of a dichotomy because the wider the resection, sometimes the less function that maybe a, a, an arm or a leg will have afterwards. And we have to sort of balance it, this make a compromise between getting a wider resection, getting all the tumour out, and having a, a limb that's worthwhile and functional afterwards. And that comes from experience of working in the team that I've spoken to about earlier. And then there's this idea of neo and neo of neoadjuvant and adjuvant treatment. Neoadjuvant is treatment that occurs before surgery, and adjuvant treatment after surgery. Um, what we're finding is that really in soft tissue sarcomas, we've really only got radiotherapies we can call on. And that's again a local treatment. It's a local control on our surgery. What we really are missing in soft tissue sarcomas, and a lot of bone sarcomas, is a systemic treatment. It's chemotherapy. Going to mop up all those micro, potential micrometastases that we don't know about when it comes to treating those patients. And unfortunately, that's what we're seeing in quite a few patients. We're getting clear margin, we're getting the tumor out, but a few months later, they're getting chest disease because we haven't been able to treat those micrometastases when we first saw that patient. What we can do in some of our bone tumors, but not all of them. 